It's Joshua from Parent Protect. I'm back with Joshua. Yes. Crime Stoppers of Houston. And today we want to talk about boundaries yeah. in relationships. I think the challenge that we hear and we see when students are connected so much digitally, online, through social media, through devices, and able to constantly communicate, there's this new level of pressure mm. that comes into a relationship. And even Pew did some research on this, and they found that 15% of teens said that they're that were in relationships said their romantic partner expected them to check in every single hour. So could you help us know what does that look like? Any practical tips for families or for students who might be in a relationship? Yeah, and I would agree. Like, I think the relationships that teens are in specifically probably determine their trajectory for the rest of their lives, right? Because the habits and the boundaries that we have when we're 14, 15, 16, they yeah. can have a very real impact on our relationships on the 20s, 30s. So again, if we can, for example... Uh, establish boundaries around just how often my partner expects me to be in communication. Kids have jobs, right? They may be uh, at a sports practice after school, hopefully focused at, in class during the day. Yeah. So they can't be texting uh, all the time. But if their partner expects that from them and then that expectation isn't met, that can at the very worst lead to physical violence, but even lead to feelings of loneliness, insecurity, and maybe even fear uh, that they are going to upset their partner and what that might cause. What you're highlighting is there's so much development that's going on when you're a teen. Mm. Like these years are so important for your own personal development. Yeah. And relationships are great. I mean, I am now married to my high school sweetheart. But I think when you're in that key developmental phase, it's so important that you focus on becoming the best person you can be yeah. and from getting all those experiences that you need for your future and hey, if if you have a partner and they can support you and be a part of that, that's great. But once it reaches a point where maybe there's, like you mentioned, fear, mm -hmm. there's too much control, mm -hmm. I think that's where it's really important that you step back and say, hey, is is this helping prepare me for the future that I want? Yeah. Or is this just causing me to live in fear focused on the right now? Yeah. I think this is also a great time to talk about consent in relationships because I think when we talk about consent, we're off, most often talking about sexual activity, consent is just permission. Yeah. And we need permission to engage really in any kind of way with a partner, right? So whether that is, um, hey, can I call you when you get home from school? Hmm. Or can I follow you? Or whatever it is, right? Yeah. So I think if we can encourage young folks to have more open conversations about consent, but also just what makes them feel safe and comfortable in their relationship and doing that in a proactive way, yeah. I think that'll help keep them safe. Because I think a lot of the times we don't have these conversations until we're right in the moment, right in the minute. And it's hard to think logically and 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 have a balanced and 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 purposeful conversation because That's we're good. so emotional, right? So if we can encourage kids and empower kids and model for kids healthy relationships, boundaries, both in person and online, that'll do great things to help keep them safe. So again, whether that is not being in constant communication, whether it is deciding for ourselves, whether we want our partner to have our phone passcode, to hmm, have access yeah. to our social media accounts, right? We hear from a lot of kids that say, oh, their current boyfriend, girlfriend made them unfollow an ex on social media yeah. or goes through their phone without their permission. A lot of things that are common in teen relationships aren't safe. Uh, sometimes they aren't even legal, right? But mm. again, because they are so common and normalized, everybody does it. So yeah. how can we have this conversation with them to help keep them safe? I think you captured it with conversation. It's so important that you have the conversation. Yeah. Sit down with your partner. This doesn't have to be an event, but take time to talk about what are you comfortable with? Mm. And this is not just physical boundaries, but do we want to share every login and password? Is that a good idea? Right. I don't know. Right. Probably not. We not. Yeah. We hear stories of couples who share photos and maybe some things you probably wouldn't want posted publicly on the internet with each other. And then they break up. Yeah. The mood sours. Yeah. And a, a upset ex shares a photo with some friends and it leads to lots of hurt feelings and consequences. Yeah. So I think that's just one example of, hey, this teen, teen relationships can be great, but just keep in mind, am I sharing what I'm comfortable with? Do I want this out there? And, or would in five years, am I going to look back and say, man, 
man, I shouldn't have done this. Mm-hmm. So I think this is a, also a great opportunity for parents to jump yeah. in, right? Because we know that maybe kids just don't have that maturity yet yeah. to have those conversations. So parents... I still don't have that yeah. maturity. <laughs> Um, I, I, this is your opportunity. I remember when I had my first girlfriend in high school, I had to ask her dad for permission to date her. Right. So I think this is a great opportunity for parents to be more involved in your kids' relationships. And I know maybe parents feel a little weird about that. You want to give your kid their privacy. You want to give them room to live their own lives. But again, how can we make sure they're developing healthy habits early? And I think sometimes for some parents and some families, that means sitting both of those kids down and having a conversation about what is and is not acceptable. Yeah. What's expected? What did the dad say? He said yes. <laughs> he said yes eventually. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. Take some take some coaxing, but that's good. <laughs> I had to demonstrate to my girlfriend's parents that I was responsible and not a knucklehead, right? Yeah. And I think this is a great opportunity again for parents to just be more involved in what they're getting. Yeah. Doing. If you're if your kid's a knucklehead, you need to raise the bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Students, don't just think about the right now. Think about your future. And parents, are you setting a bar for your student? Mm that is going to help them might be a little uncomfortable, might lead to some awkward conversations, but they'll probably thank you later. The habits that we're building now in our teenage years are going to follow us throughout the rest of our lives. And so how can we, again, help them be more assertive in in establishing their boundaries? And crucially, how can we help teens, kids and teens navigate ending a relationship with somebody that is disrespecting those boundaries? So again, Mm. lots of work (laughs) for parents to do. Um, but again, it is an opportunity to make sure your kids are set up for life.